So once we have talked about extension functions, let's talk about infix and operator overloading. So, I mean, think about this. When you talk about this, this function, which is plus, and you know that it takes only one parameter. So in Kotlin, we got this awesome feature, which is called as infix. Now, what is the advantage of using infix? So instead of talking what is infix before, let's see the advantage. The advantage would be, instead of saying a1 dot plus a2, can we make it just more like English language, where you would simply say a1 plus a2. There's no, there's no need of bracket there. I mean, it will look awesome, right? When you have a1 plus a2, right? It looks more like English language. In fact, we have used this before as well. Now, if you remember, when we have talked about for loop, or when we, when we talked about range, in range, we were saying uh, 10 down to 1. So when you wanted to go from 10 to 1, we said 10 down to 1. So that down to is also a infix, fu infix function. Then we have one more. Uh, in for loop also, we were saying i in some value, right? So that even that in is a infix function. So we, using inf infix function, we can actually use English like text where you can say a1 plus a2. The only thing is infix works with a function which takes only one parameter. So as you can see, in this case, we are passing only one parameter and it also returns something, right? So what we'll do is just to make it work, we simply have to put one a keyword called as infix and your job is done. Can you see that? It, it is working. There's no compile time error now. So you can simply say a1 plus a2, your job is done. The only thing you have to do is you have to put infix in front of that. So this is infix, infix function. You have to remember only one thing, infix function takes only one parameter. Now if you run this code, and it should work. Yeah, can you see that it works? So instead of using dot and then bracket at the end, we can say a1 plus a2. It's that awesome, right? So this is infix function. Now let's talk about operator overloading. Now, if you if you are coming from C++, in fact, uh, in C, we were not having all this concept. Then in C++, they said, hey, we, now we can use operator overloading. We can we can change the way your operator works. And we were very, very excited with that. And then in Java, we don't have operator overloading. And to be, to be honest, I used to love operator overloading, but not that much that we should include that in a project. Uh, even if you love operator overloading in C++, I don't know how many of you actually implement that in a project scenario. And in Java also, we, we have not missed uh, operator overloading there. But then Kotlin says, okay, uh, maybe you, you're not using operator overloading in the project, but we do provide those features in case if you need it. Because operator overloading, using operator overloading do create some issues in the project, you know, it, it increases the complexity of your software. But then it is good to, good to have features, right? Now, how do you implement operator overloading here? Because see, when you say operator, operators, it simply means that, you know, if you have well-defined types like integers, so when you say integer plus integer, it will give you integer. When you say string plus string, it will give you a combined string. But when it comes to A1 and A2, can I say plus in between? You can see this, it is, it is giving you an error, right? Of course, you cannot use plus in between A1 and A2. How would your plus operator knows what to do, right? And that's why we use a concept of overloading. So we specify, hey plus, if you if you find yourself in between an uh, alien object and an alien object, what you have to do is you just have to call this function plus. It's that simple. So whenever you see plus operator in between, you just have to call this function called as plus. But then can we can we use any character here? Can we use any of the character? Uh, not exactly. So Kotlin says there's there's, there's, a, there's a limited set of operators which we can use for operator overloading. Now how do we know that? So you could you can go to the official website of uh, Kotlin, which is uh, which is kotlin.org and they do have their own documentation. I just love this documentation. In fact, I'm trying to create as many as videos possible from this documentation. Uh, not exactly, uh, I'm following this tutorial here, but then, you know, I'm taking help of this, how to create extensions, how to use loops, how to use ranges. So I have used some, some of these examples here. So in this, they have a concept called as operator overloading, where uh, they are talking about different operators which are supported. Example, they support unity operators where you can use plus, minus, then exclamation, which is not. And even if you are using plus here, it will get converted into unary plus. When we use minus, it will be converted into min unary minus. When you use not, it uses not function. Same goes with uh, this one, increment, decrement. When you say plus, plus, it goes for increment method. When you go say minus, minus, it goes for decrement method. And list goes on. Now, then we have binary operators where you have plus, 
So when we when you try to do plus, we have to use our function name as plus. Now this is compulsory, okay? You have to use the same function name, otherwise it will not work. So in this example, we'll be looking looking at only plus here. Uh, you can try it out. You can go with minus. You can go with times, which is multiplication. You can go with division. You can go with remainder. And in fact, you can see that we have used this one before as well, right? So this is range, in fact. So this is range. Okay. So let's go back. And yeah, there's one more update. Uh, so if you want to go for mod, you should be using rem, which is for reminder, not not uh, mod, because mod is uh, they have deprecated mod. So again, you can use mod, but then not uh, it is not recommended. So let me just go back. Oh, they uh, they also have uh, index thing. Okay, they also provide bracket as the operator overloading. We can use this. Okay, let me just go back to my code and let's see what we can do here. So whenever you have plus. So if so, this plus will call this plus, right? But it should work, right? We have seen that on the on the page. But then, just to define that this plus works with the operator, it is not a individual function here. We have to use a keyword called as operator. The moment you do that, it will be treated. Oh, what's that? Yeah. So the moment you do that, it will be treated as an operator. So whenever you say plus, it will call this plus. If you want to go for minus, you have to define minus. That's how it works. Let me just run this code and it does work right so that's how you use infix function and that's why you, you that's how you use uh, operator overloading just to recap infix function takes only one parameter that's you have to remember and uh, you have to define infix keyword there if you want to use operator overloading you just have to put an operator operator as a keyword before and then you can use a uh, uh, normal operators which we use so that's it from that's it everyone i hope you like this videos I'm, I'm expecting that you are sharing my videos with your friends and do subscribe for for the videos